think there's people there. <laughs> what? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. I could weave in all future ends. Who's that? I suppose that's obligatory oh. now. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it done? Done. Do you know what I like to do actually before before we start? No, you know, before you come in the room. What do you like to do? I do uh, face exercises. Oh. Exercises. Oh, shut up. I didn't even know I was doing that last time. I would never do face exercises. No. Come on. <clears throat> um, okay. Welcome to episode four. Oh. It's not even funny. I mean, you could have done your makeup before we started. Where's Charles? <laughs> Charles? Where's he gone? That's Charles, isn't it? Yes. Like, what do you mean, oh, is that know. Charles? Charles is our new stylist. You can hardly see his eyes because of the way that the brown fell. It's amazing wool, though. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love that. Yes. More of Charles later. Charles is now a member of the team. He does all our makeup before we start. <laughs> but you were touching up your lipstick. It's shocking. Welcome back uh, to episode four. And I'm... Um, extremely excited about this episode. Are you? Yes. I was getting excited when I was doing the production notes yesterday. That <laughs> sounds very grand. It does. It's the first time I've actually been excited when I've been... Really? Why were you excited? Um, We've got lots of content, haven't we? So I guess we better just crack on. Yes. Um, so who are you? My name is Kay. I am um, Bryony Bear on Ravelry and on Instagram I am Bryony Bears. And... Uh, my name has changed and you're going to find out why later on in the podcast it's still spelt the same but it's pronounced differently my name is obi-wan knitter <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> and i shall mention you later so yes uh you will find me on ravelry as obi-wan knitter and you will find me on Instagram as Obi Wan Knitter. And thank you to whoever's just started. Uh, what do you think they're doing? Um, it sounds like an. We're trying to do a podcast in here. <laughs> I think it's some sort of angle grinder or something. Nice. It's, it's like... as if he knows. I bet he does know. He knew that we'd be recording yeah, this morning. Yeah, the joys of living in suburbia, I suppose, isn't it? It is. Um. The Bears in the Wild competition. Yes. There's been some extra, just today, yeah. amazing photo right. from Australia. It's brilliant. Was, is it the Missile Park? Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> There's pictures of... Woomera. Um, Woomera. We're probably pronouncing that totally wrong. Woomera. I think it's more Woomera. Do you? It's not... Check it out on Google yeah. Earth. I did. It's like the set from Star Wars. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> And it's um, it's just it's like it's got loads of planes and missiles and everything in the background, and there's a little bear. So cool. It's really cool. So cute. Yeah. But there's loads of people who haven't been posting their amazing pictures. Are there? Yes. The Star Wars ones. Oh yeah, they've not gone in yet. Is it one and knit socks? I think so. Um, yes. Yes, Diane. One and knit socks. Star Wars photos. Amazing shots. Of Mrs. Bakery Bear yeah. with um, Aura Singh from she's in uh, Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace, and then she's in the Clone Wars. And the picture's amazing because you'd think it was a mannequin, yeah. but it's actually a real woman, and she looks just like her. And then loads of other really amazing ones. Put them in the thread. Put them in. Bryony loves Star Bryony, Wars. Yeah, Bryony loves. But all then my, my favourite so far, I, I've, I think I have two favourite. Oh, should we even say if I have favourites? That helps people though, doesn't it? But it's not up to us anyway, Brian. It's not up to it's, us. It's Brian here. We're not influencing it. No, no, no. Brian. We're absolutely yeah, not. So maybe not. me saying favourites, that actually helps people get an idea for... Maybe. Um, I love Knitting Den's post. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I've looked for that sign as well on Google Earth. Uh, is it Estes? Estes Park. Yes. Because it's quite big, isn't it? 
Uh, well, I don't know how... Uh, oh, the sign, you mean? Yeah. I don't know. It just looked like a big rock. I'm not sure you'd be able to see that from space. No, probably. Really. <laughs> it's not like it's the Great Wall of China or something. Probably not. Yeah. That's true. I've never looked at the Great Wall of China on Google Earth before. No, I haven't. I mean, that's impressive. Um, yeah, I really like knitting dens. And who did the great photo by the lake? Oh. I think we spoke about this last episode. Uh, but that's seriously cool as well. Yeah, Get along to the know. thread and have a look. There's some amazing pictures appearing. And post your pictures. Post your pictures. Yes. We love them. I love seeing them all. It's just amazing. And there's just been some fabulous Finnish bears. And there was one um, recently that was done in Dancing Dog Dye Works. And it had a bright blue dress. And it was absolutely beautiful. Um, so, yeah, we've loved seeing them all, haven't we? Also, remember to enter uh, the... Is that the right thing to say? Enter the knittables knit along. Yeah, just yes. you need you need to just put your finished bears in her finished objects thread, and that finishes at the end of June, which is a week on Monday, I think. Oh, did you see the thing in the thread? Um, where I can't remember who it was, but she's run out of, of oh, yarn, yeah. and she's she's run out of yarn. She's got <gasps> half a leg. Left it's, just... it's going to take like two weeks to oh, get more no. yarn, so she's not going to finish it in time. And she didn't say what yarn it was. It's just. I, I mean, I doubt I've got it, but I mean, if you want to message Mrs. Bakery me, Mrs. Bakery legless. I know. If you want to message me and tell me what yarn it was, if I've got it, I will happily send you some. Um, Expedited so, delivery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can get it finished in time. Yeah. Kay Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? <laughs> What's on my needles? Uh, well, the first thing actually is just what I'm knitting on right now and I think we spoke about this a couple of a couple of episodes ago didn't we that we wanted to knit a blanket together yes um, and I ummed and ahmed and I ordered I actually got two afghan pattern books because I was we were going to do we'll like, work afghan up to squares we will do one yeah and we could do that but then I just thought let's oh, start it at Chatsworth you know do I want to yeah do I want to um, knit those really complex cables and you know am I in the mood for that and I decided I wasn't really at the minute so um, I was looking I was looking through Ravelry projects and um, and also I was reading a blog of, of a Ravelry friend Deb who is Tink Hickman I always struggle saying it Tink Hickman she does a really beautiful blog and I'm trying to remember the name. I think it's A World of Imagination. I'm sorry, Deb, if I've got that slightly wrong. Um, it makes me think of Willy Wonka. Yeah. That song at the it. end. But her blog is just so pretty. If and her photography. You, then you, sorry. Her photography is gorgeous. And she's knitting a... Shush. Sorry. She's knitting a baby blanket at the minute. And it's just a garter stripe baby blanket. And she's showing like the reverse side where the colours change. And I just absolutely loved it. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm, we're just going to do a simple garter stitch blanket and then that way what, either one of us can just pick it up whenever we want to and it's just knitting and I know we had an issue. We had a slight issue because what was happening... I'll show it you first of all. But it's so simple. It's Yeah, it's literally... I cast on. I said to Dan, I have no idea how many shall I cast on and I was thinking 300. And Dan said 270, I was like, right, I'm happy with 270. So I did, and I think it's going to be plenty massive, you know, plenty big enough. Um, so this is how it's looking at the moment. And this is the side that I really like, you know, with this change of colour. And what we're going to do is we're just going to work on a colour, and then when we, either one of us gets bored with the colour, just change it. And I want it to be all different widths, because Deb's was like that. It was all, there was like a big big chunk and then just a little skinny chunk and a me and it was really nice that it was random like that so you I, I cast it on didn't I and did a couple of rows and then you and then Dan worked on it but what he did he's used to working in the round just going round and round and round and this is back back and forth it's all got you know it's all knits but it's back and forth but he kind of worked through half a row and he put it down and then when he picked it back up again it was the other way around and he didn't didn't notice that his, his you know his yarn wasn't in the right place and you know it just didn't well, rea you did you just didn't realise did you and it was that way around wasn't it and you'd gone like that and just started knitting no, hold back on, no, 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 on no, no, yourself no. we need to establish what happened show me how it went wrong right 
So you're knitting like this, yeah, and your yarn's always on your right hand side coming out of the back. Yes. You'd put it down, picked it back up again, and it was this way around. But what you'd done, it, your yarn was at the front, but I don't think you must have realised. You just no. pushed it to the back and then started knitting back on yourself. So where should the yarn be? Your yarn's always on the right hand side, like that. So if I'm always on the right hand side, I'm always going to be all right? Yes. Right, okay. So if you stop in the middle of the row, your yarn wants to be on the right hand side. And then when I pick it back up again, so long as it's on the right hand side, side, I can't yeah. possibly go wrong. No. So he'd done it that, and you know, he'd effectively done short rows. <laughs> It got like back and forth, but we'd done it a couple of times and it was quite a it was lot great. of knitting. It was great. And I was like, what's gone on? I couldn't work it out at all. And then I realised what he'd done. So really I, angry, I, I wasn't angry. It just it took me about half an hour to fix it though, because I literally just pulled it, pulled half of it off the needles. I couldn't tink back all that because it was backwards and forwards. And, uh, I wept. So I, I just ripped it like all off. Like a small child. I ripped it all off, sorted it out, knit a row back and then we were, we were right. So... Because I wanted to change colour last night, I picked it up and I did three rows last night. So it's it's just all Cascade 220, the just the standard 220, with, with a 5mm needle on a huge cord, the longest one I could find, which I think is like 120 centimetres, I think, or something. And um, I've just got a whole bag full of different colours and I, I just ordered a load of colours that I thought looked nice together and they kind of all turned out to be sort of autumn looking colours. So we've got this green and I've kept all the, the tags and I like stuck a little bit of the yarn onto each one so I'd know which colour was which. So I can put it all, I haven't set up a project for it yet actually. No. We both need to put it on our project page don't we? Yeah okay. Shall I move on to the next thing? No. Alright, okay. Dan Jones, what's on your needles? Well, this week's been a big week. You'll find out why in what's off your needles. And what's on your needles, it's slightly boring um, because I've shown it to you. Well, I've just shown it a lot and I'm sorry that I've not finished it yet. Ooh, and I'm going to work like crazy now to get this um, finished. So nice. Um, but I, I absolutely love... I just love doing this. And look, I couldn't, it's the nicest thing in the look world. What I found the other skein. Oh yes. Um, I couldn't. It was stuck in a drawer last week, last time, and I, I couldn't find it. But I've dug it out, and I couldn't remember the colourway or anything. So I found it, and it's Countess Ablaze, and it's caught. Cool. It's 100% superwash merino, and it says it's a DK weight, but it, gosh, it's worsted really to me. It's very like um, Malabrigo. Um, Malabrigo worsted, um, 225 meters, 100 grams, and it's the Madame Smoosh Singles, and the colorway is called Tiffany's Lipstick. I wonder if that's like Tiffany from. I don't know. Maybe she knows somebody called Tiffany, and she had a pink lipstick. Did she do? I think we're alone now. Madame Smoosh Singles, really beautiful. Is that right, Tiffany? I think we're alone now. Yes. Do you remember so, that song? I think we're. Alone. <laughs> um, um, now, someone, because I've got so few things that are on my needles, and you'll find out why in a minute, um, someone asked about how I knit. Oh, yes. So, what should I do? They said it was really unusual. They'd never seen anybody knitting that way before, and I don't. I, I think it's because he, was, he wraps his yarn around his hand. And, it, you know, we knit English style, so we're throwers, as, as it's called in the trade. Um, but he'd, you know, just to tension his yarn, I think you just wrap it around your hand. And I think it's because that's what I do. I do that. I wrap my hand, you know, I wrap the yarn around and knit. And I think you just saw me doing it, didn't you? So kind of just found your own way of doing it. So yes. there you go. And um, I've tried to knit continental style and I cannot do it. Well, and this, no. this is the way that I saw my granny knitting. Yeah, so. and my mum. And I think, you know, because we're English, and I think this is the traditional English way of knitting. And I think when you've done it for years and years and years and years, and that's the way you learnt, it's very difficult to reteach yourself how I to do it. I think this is a pertinent time as well to talk about carbons. Um, I think we mentioned this um, maybe a couple of episodes ago, but not in particular great detail. I struggled big time with these and I know quite a few people 
Um, I've struggled with these um, and use different needles. Um, I personally found that it was a technique thing for me um, and I think my techniques got better because of my ability to now use them. Now how will my technique have changed though? Because before know, what was happening, mean. before it was too sticky. So um, Oh the needles, it was hard for you to push it along. I, I wasn't couldn't it? get I couldn't get the stitches to move up and down well, the needles. So yeah, but I mean, it's definitely a tension thing, but also as well, I mean, it's less a tension thing. It's more the fact that I'm now uh, pushing more of my stitches up and yeah. controlling it with my hand, yeah. which I think has made me a better knitter yeah. um, and has probably enabled me um, to do the socks, um, I think. I think that's definitely yeah. helped. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? <laughs> this is another new cast on and this is in a lovely bag that my look at the little bag that my friend Sally made for me when she was knitting her bears she said to me that um, she was finding it kind of not tricky but because um, you've got like loads of you've got loads of things going on when you're knitting a bear and there's little pieces and you've got you know some different yarns and all your little bits that you need um, and in a normal project bag, it's difficult to kind of see into it and see what's going on. And she says, oh, I'm going to knit. She, I'm going to knit. She said she was going to sew herself a little bear project bag. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. So, of course, she made one for me as well because she's lovely like that. Um, and she sent it to me. And here it is. And I love it. It's Kath Kidston fabric. It's so sweet. But because I'm not knitting a bear at the moment for the first time in, like, I can't imagine how long. I wanted to use it, so I started a new project, and I've put it in here, and I love it. What and is I've it? I've started. Bryony wears one of my cowls all the time, and it's a cowl that a, um, a friend, my friend Jen, knit me, almost I think two, maybe a year and a half, two years ago now, and it's the Two Infinity and Beyond by Hohi Locatelli. Have I got that right? Yes, Hohi Locatelli, and I'll show you. It is a free pattern actually, so and it's in black and white, so I'm sorry it's not the best picture. But people probably know it. To infinity and beyond, and she loves it, and she she steals it off me all the time. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna make her her own. So I bought I bought this yarn a while back. Her favourite colour is lilac. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was cyan. Oh she loves yeah. Cyan is her latest favourite. She calls everything that's blue cyan. She's is that really cyan, funny. Mummy? Is that cyan? <laughs> She's really funny. Um so I got three balls of this. It's sublime, baby cashmere, merino, silk, four ply. It's it's really lovely, really beautiful yarn in this really pretty lilac colour. And I literally just cast it on the other night. I haven't even started the lace section yet. I've just done the couple of rows of of ribbing but there it is I've started it and this is on some carbons as well lovely lovely and it's beautiful yarn if you've never knit with this I would really recommend it I have knit with it a few times now it's really really soft really squishy and definitely recommend it so I'm hoping that's going to be a fairly quick knit how many more things do you have just the one Mrs. Wembley. Just the one, Mrs. Wembley. What was that from? What was it called? Dennis Waterman. Dennis wasn't it? Waterman. On the up. Yes. <gasps> yes. I can't believe I remembered that. Yeah, on the up. Gosh, that's from years ago. That program. That's but... not in the same league as Miranda. No, it's not. And people, some people went out and found Miranda, and there was one person in particular who asked for suggestions on other programs, it was and the, I haven't the, forgotten the about it. Postman you. in New York. That's right. Yes. Cool guy. Yes. Yeah. That's right. He did, and I haven't forgotten about you. And we're st I'm still thinking. It's not. We want to give you high quality yeah, recommendations. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of really think. No twaddle. Um. But this is my last thing that's on the needles, and I've actually finished one sock, and I wanted some sock blockers just to show off socks on the podcast, not actually to um dry them on, not to block them on them or anything, because I don't do that. And I went out and looked around, and they were like £20 for a pair of sock blockers. And Gosh. I was like, I'm not paying £20. No. So I made some out of cardboard. <laughs> Ta da! So I finished one of my Jack socks. Here it is. So that's one done. And I'm not far off finishing the other one. 
I'm on the foot of sock number two. So I will have done that within the next couple of days. And that's with my, that's the red gear again. Look, you can get from Hobbycraft over here. It's very nice yarn actually to work with. That's me. I'm sorry, darling. What else is on your needles? No. What? No, you have to do it properly. Ah, oh, Dan Jones. What's on your needles? Ta da! <laughs> Look at that! That's the other sock blocker. It's a good job we've not got two finished pairs, isn't it? I'd have to make some more. I finished a sock. Yay! I have expert help. Um, but yet yeah, that is my first ever sock. It's very good. And actually. it was a it was a challenge to start with because the needles are small and I've got big clumsy hands. Um, but then once I got down onto this bit, um, I sort of got myself into a good place. I mean, I, I just had no idea around here, and and Kay was helping me an awful lot. Um, but I really feel. Um, and I'm sure people who've done socks maybe would say the same thing, but if you know you, you think you're doing socks, I think once you get down to the end and you've done it, when you're on the, the, the toe decreases, it just gives you confidence that I know when I do the next one, I'll be able to mentally take on board more of what's going on around here. Yeah. Because um, they're down to there, easy peasy, around here, not a clue. <laughs> um, and then down here, easy peasy, and down there, easy peasy. Yeah. So really, the only challenging bit is this bit here. Yeah, and you know, I could have, we could have done a simpler heel, but um, we like I, I really like the traditional, and I know it's not the modern way of doing things these days, but I do really like the traditional heel flap and gusset, and it fits really well, and this will sound ridiculous, but the other reason that I like it is that when you've got them stored, when they're stored, they fold really nicely when they're that shape with the heel flap and gusset. They just match up and you fold them and they fold really nicely when you've got like a different kind of heel. I never know quite how to fold them. And this is West Yorkshire Spinners. West Yorkshire Spinners. Blue Face Leicester and the colourway, have I missed anything? What weight? Uh, it's uh, DK weight. DK. Uh, and the colourway is something to do with the bird. Yeah. Uh, partridge. No. Uh, pigeon. Wood pigeon. Yes. yes. I knew I'd get there. And it does sort of look like a wood it pigeon. It does. It's the colours of a wood pigeon, yeah. I mean, speaking of good TV programmes, but I'm sure you will we'll have all seen this, Black Adder um, oh, yeah. is really good. Yeah. Um, and wood pigeon makes me think of Black Adder because in Black Adder goes forth, um, he eats... Oh, he does. Yeah. He eats the kernel. Is this the this kernels? delicious plump-breasted <laughs> wood pigeon. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's worth a watch if you haven't yeah. watched it. Yeah. New thread on Bakery Bear's podcast forum. And that thread is called What's on Your Needles? Now, in the process of Kay putting out the bear pattern and, and you know the threads that have been there for bear chatter and we just we want to open a thread where we can see the other things that you're making because it's just great isn't it sharing and seeing and learning from other people um, so we would love you to put in what's on your needles Yay. into that thread now obviously at the moment th th there's nothing there so what I'm going to do and I'm going to do this each week is I'm going to pick three people from our group and I'm going to ask you what's on your needles <laughs> each week i will do a shout out for three people and those three people it'd be completely random each week but you will have um engaged me somehow that week so it will be maybe you've posted something on instagram and i've seen it and i've loved it um it might be something completely different and you'll see how you can engage me this week um so here we go are you ready you ready for the first What's on your needles? Who is it going to be? <laughs> Casey Andrew, what's on your needles? <laughs> get over to the forum now, get in the thread and post what's on your needles. Now you may be wondering why I chose Casey this week. Well, I chose Casey because Casey sent me a message this week saying, why do I call myself Obi-Wan Knitter? Why do I not call myself Obi Wan Kanita, like Obi Wan Kenobi. 
And I don't know why you didn't do that. It's genius. I think maybe that was your Casey, first train of thought, wasn't it? You are a genius. And as you saw at the start of, of today's show, I have changed my name. The spelling is the same. It is merely the intonation that That's has right. changed. So Casey, I, I need to see you in that form and I need to see what's on your needles. We all do, don't we? Yay! Who's next? There's three people. Who's it going to be? Is it me? Molly! Molly! <laughs> what's on your needles? Get over to the forum now. Get on the thread and show us what's on your needles. And why have I picked Molly? Because she did an impression of me this week. And I also picked Molly because she's trying to convert her husband to Lego. The last one. Last one. Everyone's on tender hooks now. I want to pick everyone. Is it going to be Because you're all so great. Um, but I'm afraid. Oh, I'm not afraid at all. The last person has to be from Fondant Fiber. Fondant Fiber is dead. Yes, dead. Yay. What's on your needles? Get over to the forum right now and show us what's on your needles. Now, why did I pick Deb? Yes. Okay. Put it in my hand. What? Where is it? What do you want me to put in your hand? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Deb. Oh, you're right. I didn't put know which, it in my I hand. Know, I didn't know which bit of, of what she sent. Here well, we not your bits. <laughs> don't want your bits. Da, da, da. Check this out. Oh, my lord. That. That's better. You can see the colours. It's hand spun. It, it couldn't be a better colour for me. No, I absolutely. Adore, with, his, with his hair colour. I adore that colour. You know, olive greens is exactly the colour that I always go for him. Um, but just to explain, Deb has got her own um, yarn dyeing shop and fibre. And it's called fondantfibre.com. Hang on, let me get it right on the screen. There we go. Can you see that? Fondant fibre. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, and she she just contacted me and said, you know, could she send some some yarn and, and some goodies for the podcast and also for us? And, you know, gosh, it's so kind. I was really, I was just really shocked. No one ever no. has given me um, a nitty gift. This is the first yarn I've ever seen that I have to possess. Yeah. <laughs> she cool can't. She can't have it. She sent me absolutely gorgeous skein of four ply sock, superwash merino, and it does. Mine smells different. Yeah, it doesn't smell yeah, as yeah. sheepy because it's not hand spun. I think does smell different. It smells lovely, and it, the colourway is petunia. Look at that. <gasps> Look at the colours. It's beautiful, oh. actually. So thank you, Deb. I love it. And it's just my colours. I don't. I mean, I don't know how she knew. Maybe I've said I love pinks and purples, but I love it. So that one was for me. And then she sent some for you. She sent. That I love. I absolutely love. And she did say to me that I could swap mine with some of the hand spun if I wanted. But I'm gonna because I love that purple so much, and I love these so much. But I can't have everything, so. Um, these are for you. I love this one. It's hand spun yarn, mixed fibres, 180 metres, 100 grams, and it looks like a kind of worsted Aran sort of weight, I would say. It's so pretty, and it's got sparkles in it. You probably, the sparkles are probably not going to show up, but it's got like, per and they're all different colours, the sparkles. The sparkles are like, there's purple there, blue, there's some silvery sparkles, gold, oh my gosh. It's so pretty, look. Look how pretty that is. Look! It's so nice. So there's that one. And then she sent Merino Silk in Forget Me Not. It's so, this is so soft. Oh, it's so soft and it'd match what I'm wearing now. Look. Merino Silk in Forget Me Not. It's a bit paler than that, it's coming out a bit. There you go. And then the last one she sent is BFL, which is my favourite. Falkland cashmere and silk, 200 metres, nine wraps per inch. So again, I'd say that's probably a chunky weight. 200 metres though. Beautiful natural colours. And I think this is undyed this. I think it's just the natural colours. So what we have here is a random number generator. As you can see there, 
There are 313 members currently of the Bakery Bears podcast group. The first three members are the moderators, so we're removing them from the competition, and we are about to draw a random one of these, number. But before we do that, it's, it's one of these. I want you to choose which one. Um, which one we're going to give away now? What do you think? What do you think? That one. This one. Yes. <gasps> He's gone for this one. And the other two, Deb, if it's okay, I'm going to save for for later prizes at some point. Um, but this is the one now. Da da da. How nice is this? Beaut it's absolutely beautiful and it's soft and it's lovely. Oh, and it smells so good. Oh, I wish I had to smell a vision. Shall I press the button? Press the button, press the button. So uh, let's make it so that they can see it too. Uh, so generate is right there. So I'm gonna press generate. And where does the number come up? It's there, it's there. What is it, what is it? <gasps> it's 285. 285. We now need to find out who 285 is. Right, that one. K fine knits. But if you if you happen to be watching, then um, just um, send me a, a PM on Ravelry with your address. So lucky! I love it. Look, it's so nice. Our first prize draw. Yay! Thank so, you to Deb. Thank you to Deb, and also what Deb said. She very kindly said that if you wanted to go and have a look at a shop, fondantfibre.com then um, she's given me a coupon code for a 10% dis discount and it's more stash, all one word, capital letters. And here it is across the bottom <laughs> of your screen. More stash. So if you put that in on the checkout, then you get 10% off. Kay Jones, yeah. what's off your needles? Oh my gosh, where to start? Let me just pop that away. Um, and it Brian, a tiny bird. Oh. Oh. It's the Bluebird of Happiness by, I wrote it down, Sarah Elizabeth Kellner. I just wanted to knit something cute for her one day. It only took about an hour. And Molly loves these. And they're very, it's a very cute, quick little pattern. Uh, my mother-in-law, Dan's mum. Ah. This is a bit of a, it's not a tail it's as such. It's the gloves. It's not a tail as such. Look how pretty the colour looks, actually. Oh, Look it's lovely. I'd wear those. Yeah. Um, I knit her some of these gloves. It wasn't last Christmas. I think it was Christmas before, I think. And Wendy's birthday is on Boxing Day. So she has Christmas and then a birthday. So I always send her like two things every year. And I knit her a pair of these gloves one year because she plays tennis a lot. And she's, she plays in the winter. She's absolutely crazy. She won't mind me saying that. She's bonkers. You know, she'll go out in all weathers and play. So... I knit her a pair of these and it's the um, the pattern is the Susie Rogers reading mitt. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I knit her a cream pair because I thought they would go with everything. And if she wanted to wear them when she was playing tennis in the winter, then that would be a really good colour with a white. And she really liked them and she asked for another pair. So I knit her another pair out of some Madeleine Tosh I had, I think. And then a friend, I forget the train of how this went, but um, then a friend saw them and a friend really liked them. So I knit a black pair, I think she wanted for a friend, and then she wanted another pair. I think I've knit her a, a blue blue pair and another sort of pinky red pair. Altogether I've done five pairs for her. I think she's only got two. I mean, she'd have to correct me, I'm not sure. I think I she think... has an online shop and you're actually <laughs> providing the stock for it. Um, so Wendy's she, Woolen Wonders. <laughs> so I've knit a five all together and then she was talking to Dan the other day and a friend of hers had seen them and asked if I would knit her a pair for her to give to her friend for a birthday. And I think she was worried about asking me because I'd knit so many pairs previously, but I thought, you know, I've not I've not done them for a while. And it's an easy, nice, and it's a nice pattern. So I thought, okay. She didn't have a colour preference, so I just thought, right, I'll go into my stash and just dig something out. And I've had this in my stash for ages. It's Madeleine Tosh Vintage. The pattern calls for a DK, but I've knit them with worsted weight before and it's it comes out absolutely fine. It's Tosh Vintage in Fathom. Have you... Don't do this two episodes in a row. <laughs> Dan Jones was off your needles. Well... And um, the only thing that's off my needles actually um, is that sock and you've already seen it. So true to form, I'm gonna show you um, 
a couple of things that are off my needles. I showed you um, the Back to the Future time machine last week. Well, for Father's Day, among other lovely things which Kay bought me, um, she got me this. Who are you going to call? Yay. Yes. It's the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. And also, you obviously get the Ghostbusters. <laughs> and Bryony loves them. And yeah, there's two faces. Um, so there's a, like a scared face for when they're fighting Mr. Stay Puffed. Um, and there's a happy face on the other side. Um, and this is a really, really great build. It takes about two hours. Um, and uh, it was great fun. Brian and I did it together um, and we've been playing with this uh, with some of her Legos. So uh, those are my two what's off your needles. Yay. But now we find ourselves in episode four of introducing Mrs. Bakery Bear to Mr. Bakery Bear. So I said to Sally, it looks like he's going to the beach to have like a 4th of July celebration. He should have a little flag or something, shouldn't he? So there he is, he's got a little cable jumper. Show his ears. His ears, you can probably see it better, but I don't know, it's difficult, the lighting. Just, no, take it back there. Oh no, oh, there perfect, we go. perfect. Look, his ears are two, two tone. He's got a darker section in the middle for his ears. There's his little jumper. Little shorts, and I did them. I love this. I did them so they come sort of fairly high on his little. Look at his little belly. <laughs> come quite high on his little belly. He looks like a little man, a little old man. Do you know with his trousers hitched up? I thought that was really cute. So there's his little belly, and his jumper. So his the trousers are knitting the, that are all knitting the round, and his jumper is knit flat. So there's. The official Mr. Bakery Bear. Um, so there, there he is. So he's the. He matches what I've got on. Look. Yay. We match. So how how is he different from Mrs. Bakery how Bear? How is he different? He's his body is a little bit longer, so he's a little bit taller. Because the man is always. Because the than man's the taller. The, his feet are done differently because he doesn't have shoes, so his feet are seamed there. And the, uh, as and I found out yesterday, the amazing thing about the way that these feet are done is, um, I was able to stand yeah, up. Yeah, they stand. They do stand up. Yeah, they do stand up. Mrs. Beckerbed doesn't. I can't get her to stand no, up. No, it's because of her shoes, probably. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, they do stand up. Um, and then on his ears, I did two tone ears on him as well. And obviously his clothes are all different. And they're all in the pattern, of course. Yes. Which is where? It's on Ravelry now. Yay! So, Mr and Mrs. Mr and Mrs. And it's and so sweet. And they're together at last. Um, right, because as soon as there was, you know, an official Mr. And the, the cool thing is, I didn't do this deliberately, but actually when I put Mr and Mrs together, look, they match, they kind of match. Look how cute they are. Look on! Look, they're so cute. And the colours kind of go, I think. I love them. Oh, look, there they are going off together. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, so, Bryony decided that she wanted to do a marriage ceremony. She's done that before. When I, did, when I made the bride and groom bear, she had a whole ceremony. And she well, got all her teddies surrounding them and everything. It was really cute. Wanting yeah. to marry. And then she did a full ceremony. She and did, they disappeared really. off somewhere yesterday as well. I don't quite know where. <laughs> Maybe if you, you saw on Instagram, if you search on, um, I think, Mrs. Bakery Bear and Mr. Bakery Bear, you'll see a picture of them just yeah. wandering off. I don't yeah. quite know what was going on. Um, so there. And then I, I knit a few other a few other samples, obviously, of, of Mr. Bear. And I did... I want to show him. Okay. He's, you can talk about it. I just want to show you him. He's my favourite. He's called Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> Dan decided he looked like Jeffrey. Say hi, Jeffrey. I really like him and he's kind of, I think he looks like he's going hiking for some reason. He's Appalachian Mountains Bear. Yeah, maybe. So I didn't say actually, um, he's knit out of Quince and Company Lark, which is what I did Mrs. Bakery Bear from. The clothes are the same as what I use for Mrs. Bakery Bear. It's um, King Cole Bamboo Cotton DK. 
So that's the same for all the clothes. This one, he's Cascade 220, normal Cascade 220, and again the clothes are the same. The only difference with this one is I tried a little garter ridge at the end of his trousers, and his trousers are just solid. And now it's time to and introduce now... some you've already met. He's the producer of our podcast, Jeffrey, um, and Charles, of course, is our stylist. Hey, His Charles. Charles. Da, da, da. Charles yes. Cheese. Charles Cheese. That's a programme on CBBS. Buzz and Tell. Buzz and Tell. It's very funny. It's a really funny Go on children's programme. You can see his eyes. It's just, the eyes landed on a brown, unfortunately, on one side. So it's, it's, it, you can't, it's not, his eyes are a little bit tricky to see. But this little bear is knit with Dancing Dog Dye Works. And it's the yarn that Michelle kindly sent to me as a donation to the, to the podcast. So... I had to knit a little bear out of him and she sent me the brown as well that coordinates. So this is Ch Charles, isn't it? Yes, this is Charles. Hello, there he is. There is little eyes and little nose. And he's got on bright blue jumper and his little grey shorts. Look, I love the little bellies. Look at the little bellies. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. So that's the three little sort of sample bears I've done. And my, my friend Sally, she knit me, test knit me one as well. And she'll be in bed at the moment, but I've said to her um, to pop him onto the project page for me when um, when she gets up, so you can see her sample because hers is really cute. So, Mr. Bakery Bear um, is ready. Yep. Um, and you have already launched a thread, haven't you? Yes, there's a Mr. Bakery Bear thread. Yeah. So please, um, let's let's do it all together yeah um and put yeah. In, yeah put i'm not i mean we've not got a kind of knit along as such for mr bakery bear but you know use use that thread that i've opened you know to if you've got any questions obviously and um you know your, your yarn choices and chatter um and can mr bakery bear be entered into the competition bears in the wild yes absolutely there you go yeah because it runs till the end of july so yeah here's a thought why not do a Mr. and Mrs. Oh, yeah. entry? Yeah, yeah. And uh, hold on. You can have more than one entry. Though. Yeah. Yeah, you can have, you if, can, so you, you can know, have separate, you, you can have if two you knit, together. If you knit two bears, do two separate entries. You know, I'm not, I'm quite relaxed on that. Yeah. Um, you've not shown the prize. Um, here's the bag. The prize bag. Ta -da! So that's, and this is like the size that I use for socks or small projects. People have been asking me about the, the bags I make. Um, it's really kind and saying, you know, do you sell them? Are you going to sell them? Are you going to open an Etsy shop? And I have thought about doing this for a long while. My friends, my close friends will know that I've been umming and ahhing about, as we say in England, umming and ahhing about opening an Etsy shop. And I think because of all the, you know, the things that's been going on with my bears, I just didn't want to take something else on board I suppose I wanted to really focus on on one thing at a time so now that Mr Bakery Bear is done and I've got a little bit of headspace as Dan would call it if people want them if people want me to make some bags you know then um, you know I'd, I'd, I'd say that I'm happy to to give it a go and maybe open a little Etsy shop I don't know if anybody else knows of this shop it's called modesforyou.com modesforyou.com they're actually based in Hong Kong um, but I mean the service was excellent and it came within I think it took about eight days nine days to come from Hong Kong and they just had all this amazing fabric and I'll just show a couple I did put a picture on Instagram so I found these two and I just absolutely loved this fabric when I saw it it just made me think of all my American friends look Thanksgiving pilgrims I think they're called aren't they Little pilgrims with pumpkins and turkeys and the little hats on, oh, they're really cute. So I got that one. And then I saw this one, I thought this would be great for Halloween bags and the baking theme. It's like little Halloween cupcakes. And I thought I'd coordinate that with like a, you know, a fabric on the inside that's maybe got little spiders on or something or little ghosts. Because this reminded me of Diane actually, that's the first person it reminded me of. There's lots of dogs and they've all got different names. But it just reminded me of so many people. Because, um, look, Kiki, that makes me think of um, Denise on Knitting Down. There's just so many people it reminds me of, all the cute little dogs. Bella, there's one called Bella. <laughs> Yes. Get your knitting out, woman. Um, 
So, it's time to move on to I'm probably the section which most people message us about about how much they like and that's just so amazing that you really like this and, and you know we will continue to do this it's our favorite places to knit after this week we're going to be moving on to uh, different types of locations because um, this week we're, we're at uh, another abbey um, it's called Byland Abbey isn't it yeah it's a beautiful place and now it's time to go over to Dan at the Abbey. Oh no, I better go. <laughs> Thanks Kate. Welcome to Favourite Places to Knit. And this time, following on our Abbey theme, we've brought you to Byland Abbey, uh, still in Yorkshire. Um, and if you look up there, you can see the rose window. Now that rose window supposedly inspired the rose window, the famous rose window uh, at York Minster which of course was burnt down in the 80s and funnily enough um, when it was burnt down I was actually a chorister at York Minster um, so there's the original rose window you can see the bottom part of it there um, yeah and it's probably our favourite abbey Byland Abbey so let's take a bit of a tour around in the Abbey Church now the Abbey Church was actually separated off because the lay brothers who performed the, uh, the arable and agricultural work uh, within the Abbey um, they weren't allowed to mix with the monks when they were in the church. So here you can see this line here, this would have been a separating point between what we call the nave now, uh, which is where the lay brothers used to worship, and then if we look down this end we've got the, uh, the south and the north transept, and then the presbytery, the most sacred part of the abbey, at the far end of the church. So the, the rose window in York Minster, yeah. that, wasn't that destroyed in a fire? It was destroyed in a fire. Um, in 1984 actually, yeah. um, I was nine and I was uh, a Minster choir boy so I actually went to school at the Minster School which is opposite the Minster um, and I used to sing um, every day uh, in the choir so actually in, in the church which was struck by lightning and I mean I'll never forget it for a couple of reasons because um, you could see the fire from your house. That's right, you? yeah. that's right. It got struck, they think, at about two o'clock in the morning. And for some reason, I mean, it was quite a big storm, so I don't know if that's what woke us up. But um, we ended up outside looking across at it. And I can remember, I mean, it was literally lighting up the night sky. And we lived quite a distance from the Minster. But the Vale of York's very flat, so, you know, you could see it. And the Rose Window at Byland Abbey as I said on location, it actually inspired uh, the rose window that was uh, built in the Minster in York. Um, and Byland has been a fairly recent find for us, it hasn't has, it? It has, it has, yeah. And I don't know why we haven't found it before. Um, yeah. The first time I ever saw Byland Abbey um, was on the day that led me to start knitting. Um, was it? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I got... Um, I had a really, really bad car accident about two years ago. Two years in September. Yes. Yeah. Um, and um, I was uh, diverted from, from where I was supposed to go, and I was diverted past Byland Abbey. Uh, and I remember driving past it and thinking, that's beautiful, why have I never been before? Um, and then I, I carried on my journey and ended up in a very, very bad car accident. Yeah. And the reason why that began my journey into knitting, and I know a few people have asked about this before, because um, I, I, I suspect there's a few people out there who would like to get their husbands interested in knitting. <laughs> yeah. um, as I said earlier with the Legos, I think guys need a um, something to make them engage with. Yeah, I think they need a trigger. Yes. They? And the trigger for me was I couldn't relax after the accident. And so I had the accident in September, um, and uh, by the January I was in a real state, I couldn't relax on a night, um, I couldn't focus on the TV, uh, it was just horrible. And Kay said, I think I'd, you, I'd started knitting that scarf before. Yes, you had before the accident yes. you did. And Kay said, why don't you try knitting? And I did, and it cleared my mind, yeah. and it, it, it helped me get back to being normal again because it was just so relaxing. I cast on a hat for you I think didn't I and I said look just knit round and yeah. round and round. And yeah. it, it, I mean I've seen lots of um, doctors and specialists since my accident and I've said to all of them 
about the knitting. Yeah. Um, and they all sort of have yeah. a smile and a bit of a laugh. They all kind of giggle, don't they? They do. So Byland actually has uh, real significance in why we're even sat here mm. doing this podcast and why I'm doing this. So uh, Byland, potentially, is our favourite, though. I love it. I love it. It's got a. It's another one of these places that's just got a fantastic atmosphere, hasn't it? And there's lots to look at. It's very. Um, it's it's a lot bigger than we thought it was. It was yes. going to be, wasn't it? And yes. There's lots of. It's it's reputed for having beautiful tiled floors that are still there, and you can still see these expanses of the original tiled floors. You know that the monks walked on, and it's fantastic. It's amazing. Um, and now over to me on location to look at the tiled floors. Here we are in the church at Byland Abbey and one of the most amazing things that you don't see in many of the uh, the abbey ruins that are in uh, the UK today is the flooring. As you can see down here it's really intricate uh, tiled flooring and this would have been across the whole of the abbey church. Now some of these tiles you can actually find at the British Museum in London um, and I know I've been speaking to uh, the English Heritage who take care of this site and they're desperate to get those tiles back because they have a lovely museum here and I'm sure they'd love to display them here. Now, one of the areas of um, abbeys that I love the most is the cloister. And the cloister, um, I think it's evident in lots of different... Yeah, um, it's clearly... You can clearly see the cloister in it. Yeah, no, what I was going to say was I think it's not just Cistercian monasteries. All the monasteries oh, right. we've been to are Cistercian, but they have these in, in all monasteries, I oh, think. Right. Yeah. And, and abbey life um, all takes place around the cloister. But what I mean by that is if the monks are not in church, they're in the cloister, and they're normally um, in the north passage of the cloister. Now, the north passage of the cloister um, was split up into um, a bit like offices. I mean, it's the wrong word. I can't remember what words they used um, in in the oldest. Private studies. Yeah, they're like small private studies. And the monks would sit there and they would either uh, transcribe uh, scriptures um, or they would teach novices. The other um, three areas of the square were clear walkways. And the reason why they were clear walkways was because all the buildings at the abbey all come off those off the cloister. Um, so uh, you have the kitchen and the infirmary um, and also the warming room on the uh, the south side of the cloister and then you have the chapter house um, on the west side of the cloister and you have uh, the range where the Bened where the lay brothers um, would spend their time. Now the lay brothers weren't proper monks, they used to go out and tend the fields um, and that was on the other side of the cloister. Um, so yeah, the cloister, uh, I love to walk around. Um, it's probably the most tranquil part, I think, of, uh, of abbeys um, and the pictures, as, as you'll be seeing now, they look absolutely stunning. And Byland, the other reason I like Byland is because just literally like across the road, there's, I suppose it's a pub really, but it's not, is it? It looks like a pub. It was a pub. Uh, it was a pub. Yeah. Um, it looks like an old kind of, um, what would it be called? You know, an inn where people used to stop in when they were in carriages. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. on Pride and Prejudice, it looks like that kind yeah. of thing. And now you can go in and you can have a coffee. It's like a, a little cafe and it's... It, you literally sit there and you look out the window and you can see Byland. It's really, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And it's got, it smells really nice in there. It smells it kind of churchy. W one of the, the grandest parts of, uh, of any abbey are the main day stairs that the monks used to walk up and down, either when they were going up to bed at night or coming down from bed in the morning. Uh, and now over to me on location uh, where you can walk down those stairs with me. These were the steps to the monks dormitory and at two o'clock in the morning they would be called to their first service of the day so they would make their way down the steps they would stop on their way to the church to wash their hands and then they would follow up the side of the cloister up the steps and into the church ready for their first service now there are two kitchens in uh, in abbeys, uh, and the reason for that is, um, as I think I've probably said a couple of times now, um, initially they weren't allowed to eat meat, and even when they did start eating meat, 
um, th they still didn't want it cooked in the same kitchen as where they cooked their fish and their, uh, their vegetables. Um, so there's two kitchens. The first kitchen at Byland is absolutely amazing. You get a real feel um, for a kitchen and how kitchens feel like today. And there's not another that I've been to and we've been to a lot of abbeys that are quite like this. Um, and now over to me in the kitchen at Byland Abbey. We find myself in the kitchen at Byland Abbey. Here's the big fireplace where they used to cook fish and vegetables. They never cooked meat. Initially, the diet that Cistercian monks ate was, was very, very strict. But um, as uh, time pr progressed and things changed a bit, they did start to eat meat. But that was cooked in a separate kitchen. And then the, the meat kitchen, we saw um, Bryony found it actually. It was like a separate little building. So we looked on the plan and it was actually the meat kitchen. And um, apparently the, the, there was like a walkway from the, uh, from the meat kitchen over to the main abbey. But it, it was just basically a, you know, a, a big room, wasn't it, with a mass... In fact, I think four. it was two fireplaces. No, there was four, four fireplaces. Yeah. There was one like, on each wall, yeah. and there was one particularly big one, which was the entire wall, which must have been where they roasted their hogs or massive haunches of beef or whatever they did. Um, but, yeah, it was brilliant. Loved it. Now, Byland is uh, it's renowned for wildlife and you can see some very, very rare birds there. Can you? Yeah. Um, specifically, old birds. <laughs> and now over to me at Bylands and a wildlife special. <laughs> I've spotted something very, very rare in these parts. We're going to have to stay very, very quiet. But in a minute, we're going to just take a peer around this corner and I think we'll find the lesser spotted pink knitter. Now she's quietly at work, knitting something really beautiful, I'm sure. You don't have to stay very quiet though, otherwise we'll scare her and she might stop knitting. So follow me and let's have a look around the corner. And we're back. So that was Byland Abbey and that's the last of our Abbey specials in our favourite places to knit. Now I must tell you that the plan this week and I, I, I slightly fibbed earlier on because yeah. um, probably our most favourite place to knit is a place called Hadrian's Wall and we will be going there in a future episode. We tried to go there. We did this episode yeah and the result of that uh. was not pretty you may have seen my hands moving down here every so often that is me itching and that's because i got attacked as did Kay, um and also briny by midges oh it was awful uh, i mean i'm literally yeah really bad. it's horrible to get you excited oh, they were horrible. about a future episode have you seen Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Yes, that's where we're going. In Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, uh, there is a point uh, which, you know, the wonders of Hollywood. Yeah. Robin Hood is walking from Dover <laughs> to, Nottingham, to Nottingham, which is in the south of England. It's the far south of England. Dover's in the very south. And he's walking to probably, you know, the bottom of the Midlands of England. Yeah, it must be. And in the miles. film, he's walking along Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> which is in the far north of England. But the reason why they chose Hadrian's Wall was um, there was this one particular area called Sycamore Gap, and we will be going there on a future episode, so you will see it, don't worry. Now, we had a question. Yeah, just one last thing, actually. Um, somebody asked me on, on one of the forums if I could recommend um, online U the UK online shops that I use to buy my yarn, because I know a lot of people we're not, you know, we're, we're not really very well stocked, I don't think, in this country for good yarn shops. We're really not. Um, so I do I do shop a lot online. So I just wrote down a few of my favourites. And can you put them up on the screen? Are you able to do that? Uh, easier, I think, for people if I put them in the show notes. Okay, so they can Dan click. Put them in the show yeah. notes. The, the first one that I use is called Deramores. D-E-R-A-M-O-R-E-S. Deramores. And they do miss you when you've gone. 
They do, they send me, they sent me an email this morning saying, hey, we miss you, here's 15% off. And I'm like, no, I'm not buying. Uh, so I delete, delete, delete. Um, so Derrimores, and the service is excellent, and they stock a lot of the kind of mainstream yarns, but they also do, and they keep getting different ranges, and they do Cascade 220 now, which is brilliant. Um, they do, you know, Rowan and Sirdar, and they're really, really good service. Um, the other one that I use quite regularly is Woolstack, all one word. I mainly use them for sock yarn, actually. They're very good for, oh, they do lots of Opal and Ostrom and Step. Again, the service is excellent. I get a lot of needles from them as well. Um, the other one is uh, Wool Warehouse, two separate words, and their Cascade 220 is the cheapest, I think, that you'll find in the UK. And again, the service is excellent. And then if you want more kind of hand-dyed yarn and the kind of top-end yarn, there's Loop London, and they stock Madeleine Tosh, um, you know, oh gosh, I can't, in Eden Cotton Cottage Yarns and lots and lots of the high-end um, hand-dyed yarns. And then the other two that also do hand-dyed yarns are Meadow Yarn and Tangled Yarn. And I've used both of those and they're excellent. All of those are really good service. So, so we've come to the end of episode four. So much covered. Mr. Bakery Bear is now available for you yeah. to download and to make... Please share those bears with and us as you make them. Just a thank you again. I don't know if I've said thank you already, but just to everybody who's bought the pattern and knit it and just all the fantastic feedback that I've had. I can't tell you how much it thrills me. And, you know, I just get so emotional about it that people are knitting my pattern. And I love all the different variations and all the bears look different and it's just so lovely. And I just I just love it. And so thank you, thank you. When Kay was, was um, uh, she stopped work at the at the bank to bring up Bryony. That's where we both used to work, both used to work in a bank. Um, and Kay was, was um, staying at home and bringing Bryony up. And I remember I would go off to work. I started my career in teaching then and um, I would say to Kay, um, you know, try and find something that you love um, it's true, and you do did. it. Yeah, because um, I, I never really, I mean, the bank was a job, but it wasn't my passion at all, really. And so, you know, I would always be saying to, to Kay, try and find something. And, mm -hmm. you know, she, she thought about different things, try different things. And it's funny, I think trying to find your passion is a bit like um, trying to find your first love. Or, or any is, love. You when you're looking for it, yeah, you can't find no, it. No, and I did do different things, didn't and I? And it's only when you stop looking and yeah, you, you relax yeah. that it finds you. And um, you know, to, to say it's been emotional, it has. When yeah. when we were finishing off, you know, I've been really, really honoured to do the pattern with Kay. And uh, yeah. when we were finishing off the pattern, there's a picture. Um, it's on the one of the final pages, um, and I put it up on the screen and, and you know we were sorting everything out and putting everything where it needed to be and it was like all that process all those years of me trying to encourage Kay to find the thing she was good at yeah. and then it was like suddenly there it was and yeah yeah and he got really emotional and look he's, he's gone again look at him he's so sweet <laughs> um, but he's right, you know, and it's it's a, it's a strange thing, and you know, I never I never in a million years would have thought that I'd be doing a podcast, and um, you know, doing um, patterns and maybe making bags, and you know, now it's led me into into this path, and I I love it, and I'm you know, I wake up in the morning now, and I'm just so excited. Honestly, I'm, you know, the first thing that entered, that entered my head this morning was. Right, you know, I, I can go and put my pattern up, and I did it at about quarter past six this morning because I didn't know I was, I was like, I was up because Bryony was awake early because she got cold. And I said, Oh, I'm just going to go and do it now. So I went and, up, and I get so excited, I get really nervous doing it. I'm like, Oh, I was like drinking tea like this doing it. Um, so yeah, it, it is, it, I'm, I feel really lucky that people like the pat, you know, my patterns. And so really, I could, you know, I can't tell you how much I do appreciate it. So thank you. Um, I've composed myself now. So much cover today, Mr. Bakery Bear. Mrs. Bakery Bear still there for you. Yep. 
forum is there what's on your needles yes we want and actually, to see what you're knitting on inspire us i'd better do well, a what's I'll off your wanna, needles i just want to cast on like a billion things so i'd like, better do a what's off your needles yeah let's do a too. what's off your needles so what's on your needles for what you're working on yeah. now and then for your finished projects what's off your needles and so, remember yeah anything not just you know anything, anything next week it do. could be you yay so engage with me over the next two weeks on ravelry on uh, Instagram um, and it may be you who I select and yeah big shout out for Casey uh, and Holly and Deb this week for being the first three um, and Holly? I thought you said it was Diane. Not, oh, I didn't meant to say Molly. Oh Molly. Sorry, sorry Molly. Holly. So uh, oh oh that's just reminded me I love these Starbucks mugs. Oh. I've seen them everywhere. Do you know the ones that I'm, you know the ones I'm talking about? They're called You Are Here or something, and they've got pictures on. Retro Lemon's been showing a couple. They've been on Instagram. Oh my gosh, I would love to have a mug for places, you know, the states where I've got friends in all the states. So of course I went online to Starbucks to try and see if we could get them. Can't get them at all as far as I can gather in this country. I was like, Ugh. So hopefully at some point they will arrive. I might ask when the next time we go in Starbucks actually. Yeah. And see if it's possible. I love the designs on them, they're fabulous. I was looking at all the all the ones of where, you know, I've got friends like California and Colorado and Virginia and New York and oh all over. Massachusetts. Amelia's in Massachusetts, isn't she? I've got that right. Is she? Yes, I think so. I thought you said she was in Canada. No, she's not in Canada. I oh, thought okay. for some reason Amelia, I don't know why. Sorry, Amelia. Right. Why did I think you were in Canada? I don't know. And I think you're Massachusetts, aren't you, Amelia? You'll tell me. I think she is. Yeah, so. We will see you in two weeks.